So Hamas uh, knows that Israel's coming in and says, wait, well, we'll accept this ceasefire. It's, it's clearly a last-ditch moment to accept it, but the information war is coming out pretty strong. Secretary Wilkie, first to you. Israel says this language was softened by Egypt and Qatari. They're not sure they can accept it, but then it kind of puts them as if they're rejecting a ceasefire and there's hostages. Very complicated, obviously, at the heart of all of this, but in some way very, um, very played by a terrorist organization, Hamas. This is what you would expect. Well, it's typical of the, the terrorist propaganda machine. In their response, uh, they mentioned nothing of the hostages. Uh, Israel will never accept a ceasefire that doesn't have a, a solution or resolution to the hostage issue. We think there are about 134 hostages left. We don't know how many are are still alive. The other thing that I would, would point out is that the Biden administration seems to be in the Hamas preservation business. Um, their refusal to give the Israelis munitions that they had already paid for, yes. um, their pressure on the Israeli government to stop this. I would just point out that all of their obfuscating on both sides of the issue has not done anything uh, to lessen the impact of sort of the, the, the red brigades of the Democratic left destroying uh, American uh, college campuses. And But this is typical of, of this administration. Yes, Politico had a report today that it is Biden's, Joe Biden's donors bankrolling the anti-Israel unrest we're seeing across the nation. Um, Columbia canceling its uh, commencement, acquiescing. Harvard looks like uh, that the protesters are demanding them uh, to have a 5 p.m. deadline for some of their requests. Everything's upside down, uh, Shahar. And we also have Joe Biden, who clearly is in a difficult spot here. He had a call with Netanyahu today. Uh, advising against the Rafa, uh, you know, movement, movement, but Israel at the same way is just trying to defend itself. As we sit here on Holocaust Remembrance Day, um, where we are is just, it's heartbreaking for the hostages' families and also so significant here that there is uh, such a war being waged where Israel has our, the biggest ally, U.S., abandoning them. You know, um, thank you, Bianca. First of all, you're absolutely correct that this is not just an Israeli interest, this is an American interest. And what we're seeing on college campuses is very much anti-Israel, but it's just as much anti-American. Just take a look at the pro-Hamas demonstrations and see how many U.S. flags are being waved there. You mentioned correctly it's Holocaust Commemoration Day in Israel, and there is a promise of never again. And we must understand that Israel's need to eradicate Hamas as a governing force, as a military force in Gaza, is imperative to that promise of never again. Shlomo Mansour is an 85-year-old man. Today I heard from his granddaughter mm. that when the Hamas terrorists came into the house, the first thing they did was drag him out of the safe room and give him a strong slap across the face. Then they dragged him, dragged him into Gaza, and we haven't heard from him ever since. So it's absolutely imperative that Israel finishes the job for the sake of Israel and the United States of America. Thank you for sharing that story. I mean, this is it is the cost of war here. These are uh, lives here, these hostages. And Gordon, you know, I'd like you to weigh in on how Hamas has sort of done, you know, this last minute switcheroo who's saying we'll take this deal, but they know Israel probably won't accept it. Also, uh, Xi Jinping is over in France and Europe today talking uh, about the situation. I mean, it does seem like there is a world on fire and Joe Biden sitting directly uh, at the middle of all of it and feckless as ever. The world is on fire because China is fighting three proxy wars. And one of them is the one we've just been talking about. Um, Iran would never have the resources and wouldn't have the diplomatic support and certainly wouldn't have the propaganda and weapon support were it not for Beijing. So really what Joe Biden is doing by rescuing Hamas is rescuing Iran, which is a res rescuing China. And this is just contrary to American interests across the board. You know, Bianca, I just don't understand what the administration is doing. Maybe they're playing to college campuses. I don't know. But the point is that uh, we are seeing an existential struggle in Israel and the administration refusing to recognize it. And we're seeing uh, a lot of support and Iran really cheering on what's happening uh, in America when they're chanting death to America and the anti-Jewish um, hatred and evil that is being spewed on our campuses.